Hi guys, I'm going to go over the instructions for the social studies for this week and go over each activity and how to do it on the iPad. <clears throat> go with me to Google Classroom Social Studies and open the first assignment. You'll see the title and all the assignments for the week. We have reading on Monday, a chart on Tuesday, reading on Wednesday, a chart on Thursday, and then reading and a chart on Friday. At the bottom, click the arrow where it says your work so that you can see the document we'll be using this week. This is Eva's volunteer iPad. Click on the blue document. On your iPad at the top corner, click the pin. As we read through, we can highlight or underline as we need to. For Monday, we're just supposed to read the economy section here. So we're going to read that, and then you can pause the video and continue for the chart on Tuesday. Economy. The, eco the economic effects of the Civil War could be seen through the destruction of the physical environment of the South. Much of the South was completely devastated by battle, bombardment, military foraging, or the, practical, or the practice of total war like Sherman's March to the Sea. After slaves were freed, Planters lost a large portion of their wealth as well as their labor force. Fields were left unplanted and useless in the absence of slave labor, and much of the male population was no longer available or able to plant and harvest cash or even subsistence crops. In a predominantly, mostly, agricultural economy, the effect was devastating. Let me rotate this. There we go. That's better. Second paragraph. The North's physical environment was largely not destroyed because most of the fighting took place in the South. The North's econo economy was also ma based mainly on manufactured goods and the use of railroad and canal systems to transport these goods. They did not suffer from a lack of food or supplies as those in the South did because of the blockade and the destroyed rail lines. The war, was the war also promoted growth of businesses in the North as the government granted contracts for military supplies. The Union also issued paper money that retained most of its value after the war, while the paper money issued by the Confederacy was worthless after the war ended. The lack of factories in the South directly impacted its ability to provide for their army during the blockade and devastation of the transportation and communication systems. The war's end found entire cities burned, large plantations destroyed, and the communication and transportation systems in shambles throughout the region. That's the end of Monday, so you can pause the video and pick up and hit play for when you're ready for Tuesday. For Tuesday, we're going to go to the chart at the end of the document. Actually, let me go back. At the end of Monday, we're going to save the document that we've worked on. And then hit the little X in the corner. So now you see we've got the original document in blue and the edited document in red. To continue working on that document, click on it. Click the pen and you're ready to go for Tuesday. Tuesday's work is on the last page. So in this chart, we're going to contrast the impacts of the war on the North and the South. So we're mostly looking for differences, and today we're just going to fill in the top section. So in the North, some of the impacts were the growth of business, And then go back into those paragraphs and look at what you highlighted to see what else you can find. Find as many as you can. In the South, there was physical destruction. Money was useless or worthless. And there are several other things. Be sure to go back in the text and add as many as you can. You could pause the video here 
for Tuesday. For Wednesday, we're going to go back into the document, and today for Wednesday, we have to read <coughs> the social section. So that's three paragraphs here. Click the pen, and we can underline as we read for any differences in the North and South. Social. The social effects of the war depended greatly on pre- and post-war circumstances. Young men from both sides and old men in the South enlisted or were drafted into service. The wealthy were often able to pay for someone else to take their place. In the South, planters were exempt from service if they owned over 20 slaves, while in the North, one could pay the government to be exempt or hire a substitute to take one's place. Soldiers endured a long, difficult, and bloody war that mainly that many initially thought would be an adventure. Over 600,000 men on both sides died, mostly because of the lack of food, clean water, and hygienic medical practices. Over 1,100,000 were injured. Next page. In both regions, women had a also had a part in the war. They were left in charge of their homes, farms, and or businesses while the men were away fighting, challenging the roles expected of them in their day. In the North, women served as nurses or worked in factories during the war. So worked in factories would be strictly in the North. Others rolled bandages or knitted socks at home to send the soldiers. In the South, women were left to manage their families and continue operating the farms and plantations. In both regions, women also served as nurses, secretaries, and teachers, entering the traditionally male professions for the first time when the opposite gender was no longer available and transforming these professional fields into a pure view henceforth dominated by women. Because so many men died in the war or were maimed from their injuries or the treatment of them, many women had to continue managing their families during the difficult period of rebuilding, again often challenging the previously accepted societal roles of the time. Last paragraph. During the war, some African American slaves ran away from the plantations. Slaves ran away, that's in the South. While others continued to work where they had where they always had, waiting for the war to end. After the Emancipation Proclamation was issued, African Americans were allowed to join the Union Army, it's in the North, and many did from both the North and South, proving that race had nothing to do with the ability to be a soldier. Immediately after the war, many former slaves left the plantations where they had lived, looking for loved ones sold away. Some simply left because freedom meant the ability to do so. A few freedmen went to the north, but it was a long journey. Many returned to the areas they knew because they were familiar, had nowhere else to go, and had learned that freedom from slavery did not mean freedom from work. Often they became sharecroppers, and that's in the south. African Americans legally married, restored their families, created their own communities, participated in political in politics, and sought education that was denied to them as slaves. And that is the end of the reading for Wednesday. Be sure to hit the little save button in the corner. Okay, and X. Okay, you can pause the video now and we'll go to Thursday's work. For Thursday, we're going to click on the same document we've been using, click the pen, and go to the chart at the back. Today, we're going to focus on completing the social effects and differences in the North and the South. I'll give you two examples we can do together. In the North, um, Friedman went to the North.
And in the south, we can say that some were sharecroppers. And they kind of stayed there because they were familiar with that area. And there are others, be sure to look back in the text about the soldiers and the women. And that ends it for today. Be sure to hit save and pause the video. Okay, for Friday's box, we are, or for Friday's work, we're gonna click on the document we've been using for the week, click the pen. Today we need to read and complete the chart for political on this one. So we just have one paragraph to read. Follow along with me. Political. The political effects of the war involve trying to recover from the devastating impact of the war and the divisions created. These divisions would continue into the Reconstruction period and beyond. Lincoln's plan for Reconstruction was issued before the surrender at Appomattox. It was a lenient plan because he wanted the country to be reunited as quickly and painlessly as possible. Lincoln's assassination after the surrender caused a disruption in the rebuilding of the nation. In this paragraph, we don't see a lot of differences in the North and South. Um, the main one that I can kind of talk about is that both were trying to recover. However, that was more recovery, more physical recovery in the South. So let's go to the chart. We have to fill in this box, this section at the bottom. In the North and South, we are looking at recovery. So I'm going to make this... take over both boxes. I'm going to put more in the south and less in the north. And then we are done for the week. For the week we're going to hit save in the corner. And we are going to click the turn in button at the bottom. And then we'll, put, we'll be all set. Turn in. If you've accidentally turned it in, you can always hit unsubmit if you need to un upload anything. So if you did your work on paper, click add attachment, use camera and take a picture of your work. All right, that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, let me know. See you later.